Hi, and welcome along to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. Good to see that Gabriel finally announced as an Arsenal player. How long did that take? Jesus. Um, but, yeah, get that? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Well, listen, all good news. Um, worst kept secret. Took their time to announce it, as we seem to take our time with everything. But it's done. And um, he'll be on that plane uh, to Nuremberg for the start of the preseason tour. And that is really, really good news. Now, who else is going to be on that plane? I think this is a, this is a very um, important week for Arsenal. I think, you know... They're, they're looking to probably maybe get one over the line, maybe not in time for the Nuremberg tour, but in time for the tour of the US. You know, uh, you, you really, really want to see your team really starting to take shape for those games because, you know, the preseason, you know, you speak to every footballer, they always talk about having a great preseason that sets you in good stead for the season. And uh, it's basically those games in America, the Emirates Cup, and then we get going on the 6th of August. So not a lot of time left. Now, Lissandro Martinez is the one right now. It seems to be priority number one for Arsenal. Um, we've been talking about it all weekend. Arsenal, apparently, have put in a bid for £38 million, which has not yet been accepted by Ajax. Arsenal said to be meeting with Ajax this week to discuss the transfer, work out the fees in a hope of getting this deal done. Now, we know that the big threat to this deal is Manchester United. Manchester United also want Lissandro Martinez. Eric Ten Hag, of course, is manager. And it's going to basically boil down to one of two clubs for him. A bit like the Rafinha thing, you know, it's a choice for the player. Where does the player want to go? Um, well, of course... Ajax are well placed at the moment because uh, it's all about uh, who's going to put down the most money for what they accept. But ultimately, where is the player going to want to go? That you know, both clubs are going to come with roughly the same amount of money. But where would he go? Reunion with Eric Ten Hag, or as we're being told, he's a real big fan of the project of Arsenal. Will he go there instead? That's what's going to be really interesting to see. Um, and I think we might get a clearer sort of picture on what happens with that this week. So a pivotal week on that. Of course, as we get down towards the end of the week and we get to Nuremberg, Arteta, Edu, they'll be asked a lot about this. You know what I mean? They're not going to be able to avoid it. They have to be little press conferences and stuff like that. They're going to be asked about these transfers. So um, going to be interesting to see. Another player we've been linked with still is Serge Gnabry. Um, now, yesterday... Um, for, for well, sort of early morning, Fabrizio Romano came out and said that he understands that Arsenal are not looking to side Serge Gnabry and that he's not Serge Gnabry is not on their list of targets for this summer. Um, however, there are other outlets that are saying, well, no, he is on uh, Arsenal's list of targets. They're monitoring the situation, and if he doesn't sign a new deal, they will make a move for him. Now, of course. Again, I've explained this one many a times. It's pivotal upon Serge Gnabry. There's a contract standoff with him at the moment and Bayern Munich. He could sign a new contract with Bayern Munich. Obviously, he's looking for a better deal, higher wages. They don't want to give him too high wages. Every club has its wage structure. And that is where the standoff exists. And then again, this will be another player that would not just be Arsenal would be in for him. you find probably five, six clubs in for a player of this calibre. And this is where that lack of Champions League football will take effect um, when we're looking at targets like this. But I guess if a deal like this was to come off, this is one of those ones that gets done later on in the window if he hasn't signed a deal yet. And then, you know, it, it's, a, it's one of them late ones. So it could be a saga that continues down throughout the summer, we continually get linked with him. Now, today we're linked with Paolo Dybala, one of the uh, golden boys of uh, football. Once upon a time, people used to say that he was going to be the new Messi. Argentinian, of course, 28 now. Now, he's uh, been at Juventus for many a year, uh, has always done very well there, has always been a top player at Juve, but his contract at Juventus 
has finished and they did not renew his contract and he's looking for a new club. Now, all the indications were that he was going to be going to Inter Milan, but that seems to have gone a little bit uh, cooler now, now that Inter Milan have uh, bought back Lukaku and they're having to pay those big wages for him. Now, all of a sudden, Dybala is, may not be going to uh, Inter Milan and seemingly he could be looking for a club. Now, a publication over there in Italy called La Publica, uh, La Repubblica, is it called La Repubblica? Sorry, not La Repubblica, La Repubblica, claim that Paolo Dybala um, representatives have been talking to Arsenal and Manchester United about a possible move. Now, previously he's been talking to a lot of other clubs. There's been PSG been talking to him, apparently. He's been talking to, as we know, Inter, to Napoli are supposed to be interested in him. You know, a whole host of clubs interested in Paolo Dybala. Available on a free, so no transfer fee, but he will command some very, very high wages indeed. And I just look on this one and I think, you know, yeah, lovely rumour. It's everywhere today. I get it. But Paolo Dybala to Arsenal, it just doesn't fit, you know, what we can see they're trying to do at Arsenal at the moment, which is sensible wage structure, which he would break immediately if he came in because he'd probably be on double the wages of any player there. And then going for younger players. Now, he's not old, Paolo Dabala. You know, he's still only 28. He'd be 29 in November. But big outlay of wages on a player of 29, I don't think so. And plus as well with the signing of Jesus. I don't know, it just doesn't, seem to all add up to me this one sounds to me more like one of those ones where the agent is trying to get the best deal for his uh, player so he's trying to speak to as many clubs as possible gather as many interests as possible so that whoever gets him has to pay top dollar but um we'll keep our eye on it anyway Paolo Dybala linked today by La Republica to Arsenal and also to Manchester United now Yuri Tielemans could we make a move for him this week I'd like to see that of all the deals, I'd like to see Arsenal make a move for Yuri Tielemans. Why not get him in before pre-season, or is it that they're not after him? The thing is now, we're hearing that Newcastle are also interested in bringing him in. Um, remember, we lost out to Newcastle with Bruno Guimaraes. You, you know what? Newcastle are that team now that are out there that is a worry to every team. Before for Arsenal, you know, and any of the teams, say, the traditional, say, top six teams, they know that they're in a battle between themselves for certain signings. And then you've got the, the Spanish giants and um, you've got the Italian clubs and PSG. Uh-uh. Newcastle are now involved in that argument as well. Number one, they can outbid anybody for any player, right, with the amount of money, resources that they have. And, um, you know, they're looking out there at all of the top targets and, you know, they can present very good projects going forward to players because of the amount of, you know, amount of money they have and the type of players they can bring in. So apparently they are linked today with Yuri Tielemans. Um, again, if Arsenal are going to get Tielemans, I mean, there's a lot of talk that they've got an agreement in place and that he only wants to go to Arsenal, <laughs> we better hope that's true. And do we want him? That's what I'd love to sit down with Edu and say, do you, do you want Tielemans? Or is it just that, you know, you want him later on down in the window? What is it? <sighs> but we'll have to wait and see. Link today to this guy. Spoke about him a couple of days ago. The six foot five inch giant of a um, defensive midfielder. Still only 20. Amadou Anana. The, um, the Belgium internationals had one cap for Belgium. And um, again, lots of talk today about how, how Arsenal have been talking to his representatives and, you know, a possible alternative to Yuri Tielemans. A straight and out defensive midfielder, but he's young. Six foot five. <laughs> uh, these kids are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But listen, he's, he's uh, very highly rated. Had a good season last year for Lille. And as I said, broken into the Belgium national team. Um, will Arsenal be having a look at possibly bringing him in? Of course, we've already got Sambi Lakonga, who looked very good the other day, by the way, in that friendly. I, I, I want to see Sambi Lakonga this year play as a box-to-box -box midfielder because I think that's his best position rather than that sort of holding 
position that he was sort of playing in last year. But um, Anana, could Arsenal make a move for him? Still very young, though. And this one, Gabriel, continually getting linked to a move to Juventus. It's out there again today. Of course, you know, uh, they lost Cialini. He's gone to play over in the MLS. Um, Matthias De Litt, heavily linked with a move away from Juventus um, this summer. And uh, reports coming from out of Italy from a um, publication called Cassio Mura, Cassi Mercato, saying that um, Juventus are looking to make a bid for Gabriel. Um, they reckon that a bid of around about £43 million could tempt Arsenal to sell Gabriel. They're also looking at the situation that Arsenal are looking at Lissandro Martinez. So maybe does that, you know, mean that Gabriel might leave? I don't think Gabriel is going to leave. I don't think we need to worry about this. But what it does show us, right, is that we've got at the moment a crop of players that are very saleable. We haven't had that for quite a few years. But all of a sudden, there's players in that Arsenal team. Gabriel, Saka, um, Smith Rowe, Martinelli. These sort of guys, a lot of clubs would like to get their hand on. Now, at the moment, it's pretty secure with these players because they believe in Arteta, they believe in the Arsenal project, they're, they're here for the cause. But if we continually miss out on Champions League, these type of players are going to become very vulnerable to those sort of clubs. And this is why we really need to build a strong team this summer so that we can get back into that Champions League. Listen, thanks for watching the show today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to tune in tomorrow. Go over on to DR Sports this week, Wednesday. It's the start of the Women's Euros. I'm going to be on a load of those shows. Um, every single game of the Women's Euros, we're going to be doing a watch along to. It's going to be great fun. Ties in all of them as well. So make sure you check that out. That's from this week, Wednesday, over on DR Sports. And also, don't forget to check out the Claude Cup highlights. They were brilliant. Uh, it was me and Lee Judges on the commentary. The semi-finals. Um, the video's out right now, and you can donate to that great cause for the uh, Guna Claude Trust. Thanks for watching the show, and I'll see you tomorrow.